After working nonstop in Silicon Valley for the past eight years, I just quit my job as a tech lead at Facebook to build my own startup. The most common question I got was why? Why leave a well-paying job with tons of perks and smart people? In this video, I'll share my framework for leaving a big tech job like the one I had, which boils down to four different reasons that I'll walk through. First, I wanna call out why it's so difficult to leave a cushy job in tech. Obviously, you get paid really well, and you get amazing benefits such as 401k match, the best equipment there is, and fitness credit. But there are also a lot of things that you can't put a direct price tag on, such as working on a product that impacts millions or billions of people, working with really talented coworkers, and frankly, the prestige of working at a well-known brand. And while you're working, there's always some meaningful payday coming up. At Facebook, you get your bonus payout twice a year, and your stocks vest every three months. Because of that, it's so easy to keep telling yourself, let me just wait for this next payout and then I'll think about leaving. In some ways, that's what I did. I kept delaying my departure from the bubble of big tech until I finally decided to leave and work on my own startup. I also want to acknowledge the privilege I have with this decision. I'm really fortunate to have worked at a bunch of great companies in my career, and that's afforded me the ability to take a risk and create a startup, which I know is something that not a lot of people can do. I hope this video is helpful if you've been working in tech for a while and you might be thinking about something similar like me to leave your job. Or if you're not in the tech industry, hopefully this video will give you an insight into how and why so many people leave their job and how someone like me thinks about the decision. Let's go for it. The first input into my decision was purely financial, to look at the value of each additional dollar I was earning. The question I thought about was, by what percent is my net worth going up if I work one additional year. When that growth rate started to plateau or go down, then it became much easier to leave my job. The reason is because as you accumulate more wealth, the marginal utility of more wealth goes down. So in the extreme case, let's say you have a billion dollars, then it doesn't really make sense to take on a job which gives you 100K a year because it will essentially have no impact on your life. You already have so much money. At the other end of the spectrum, when I graduated from Stanford, I didn't really have any money. And so after working for a year, I had accumulated around $80,000 across my account. And that translated to a meaningful improvement in my quality of life. So now let's take the case of a well-to-do tech worker. You've been working for a while. One of the companies you worked at IPO'd, you got promoted a few times. So you might have hit the $1 million or maybe even the $2 million mark in your net worth. So now adding $100,000 to that amount is great, but it's probably not life-changing in the way that the first year or two of your career might have been. The other dimension here is that most tech companies offer a four-year vesting schedule. When you're hired, you get a stock grant over a period of four years. And if the company does well, that initial equity grant starts to dominate your total compensation. When you hit your four-year mark, it's actually fairly common for your total compensation to drop. In my case, despite getting promoted and doing fairly well within the Facebook performance system, my compensation was roughly the same between years four and five. So the growth rate of my net worth actually decreased a lot in that fifth year. That meant I didn't have the regret of missing out on some significant payout. That concept, regret minimization, is the second lens through which I think about a large decision like leaving your job or changing your career. I think this phrase became famous because Jeff Bezos used it when he was deciding to start Amazon. And the way it works is to ask yourself the question, will I regret not doing this? And if the answer is yes, you should just go ahead and do it. Because the idea is that you want to avoid having regret later on in your life. That's a pretty strong argument to pursue a startup while you have the time and capacity. If you have good health, you don't have an immediate financial burden of a mortgage or children, and you don't have a visa issue, you have this golden opportunity right now to try and create something meaningful on your own. And so when I thought about that, I knew if I didn't make an attempt at a startup, I might have a lot of regret in 10 or 20 years when my life might look a lot different. Another framing of this is that if you stay within a big tech company and you do well, you're gonna have a great life and almost certainly you're gonna have the option to retire early if you wanted. However, the chance of a huge outcome, I'm talking tens or hundreds of millions of dollars, that's pretty much impossible. So even though the expected value of doing a startup is less than staying in the comfort of a big tech company, you at least have a non-zero chance of getting that huge outcome. So the question to ask is, how much regret would you have if you had the ability to create or join a very early startup, which then went on to become a unicorn and you had life-changing huge amounts of wealth? 
The third factor in my thinking was to predict likely outcomes, and in particular, what happens if things don't work out. Obviously, the upside for doing a startup is unbounded if you find product market fit in a large enough market, but it's impossible to guarantee that no matter how hard you work or how smart you are. So what happens if you fail? In my peer group, one common undesirable outcome of doing a startup is that you spend a year or two working on it, you don't find traction, and you go back and get a job, either at a company that you were previously working at or some new tech company. The tech industry in general is very forgiving of this type of revolving door, where employees boomerang back into a company after going out and trying something. And even though this is considered a failure, many founders are actually able to leverage their startup experience to bring more value to the hiring company. And they end up receiving an offer at a higher level compared to when they left. So they effectively get a promotion for working on a startup and failing for uh, whatever amount of time they, they spent. Another common failure mode is to get acquired. And the idea here is that if you bring together a really high functioning team, a larger company is happy to acquire the whole team and throw away the product because they really only care about the people or the talent. Generally, in these cases, the people getting acquired are offered a better compensation package compared to normal employees who join the company individually. And this turns out to be more common than people realize. And in fact, it's what happened to my startup in 2014, which ended up getting acquired by Pinterest. So my point here is that if you're confident in yourself and your network, the actual risk of failure in a startup is not that large. Your career won't end, you're not going to be socially exiled, and you're probably going to learn a lot. And that leads to my final reason to leave your big tech job, to broaden your learning. I've been working in tech companies for a long time now, and I realized recently that I've never really interacted deeply with a salesperson. I don't know what tools they use, I don't know how they're incentivized, and I don't really know what makes someone effective at selling. And I'm not trying to become an expert in the field, but my point is that there's a whole organization and a whole job function that I know very little about. When you work at a larger company, your value comes from specialization. You might be an Android engineer, or maybe at a slightly larger company, you might be the Android performance engineer. Or if you work at a company like Facebook, which is huge, there are actually people whose whole job is to be the Android performance engineer focused on startup time. Um, and you keep going into deeper and deeper levels of expertise because that's how you get the most value for the company. There's not really that much opportunity to learn about all the other important work that needs to happen in order for the company to actually run. Building a startup is clearly one way to force yourself to understand all the other parts of a company beyond just the engineering. Hopefully that was helpful. These were the main inputs into my decision to leave my job at Facebook after almost four and a half years. And I'm not claiming that there's a single right answer that's appropriate for everyone, but I definitely feel good about my decision and I'm really, really excited about building something new. My mission with the startup is to help engineers get better at their job. I wanna help you with all the non-technical parts of your career that I think are very often neglected. Things like establishing direction for your team or leveraging performance reviews effectively. In many ways, my co-founder Alex and I have already been doing this for the past year with our tech career growth community and it's been incredibly fun and fulfilling to play a part in helping thousands of people. Now, we're trying to scale this out through a product to change how we think about learning and development for engineers. I'll leave a link for the Tech Career Growth community in the description, and if you want to follow along, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.